Hey guys, teachable moment with Stephanie. So I had a message I wanted to post this morning and it actually slipped my mind, right? And then, um, and this is something that me and like God were talking about last night. And then literally, probably like an hour ago, we started talking about it again. And then he gave me like extra details on this message and stuff, you know? So I know some people... Like I said this morning in that video that I posted about, you know, um, God's blessings doesn't come back void. You know, I was saying in that video that sometimes we like to defend ourselves. You know what I mean? We don't like to be accused of stuff, especially if you're the kind of person that has been accused of things since you were a child, right? You may have grown up defending yourself consistently. So now in your adult years, you're consistently used to defending yourself, right? Let me tell you guys this this wisdom that God gave me at last night and this evening when he added on more things. So he wants y'all to not try to prove yourself to people, okay? And here's how he explained it to me for me to be like, ah, I get it, you know? Um, let me ask you a question. Same question that God asked me. Would you rather... Be the person that is judging, that is accusing, that is slandering. Would you rather be the individual who buys into that, believes it, ends up judging just like the other party? Or would you rather be the individual that has been wrongly judged? Either way, it does not feel good to be wrongly judged. It does not feel good to be the person that judges someone wrongly. And it does not be the person, it does not feel good to be the person who is a follower, who does not use their own discernment, right? God reminded me of Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 10, I wrote it down. Proverbs 10, verse verse 18, it says, Whoever conceals hatred with lying lips and spreads slander is a fool, right? There's also another scripture in the Bible. I think it's Ecclesiastes or or some, somewhere else in Proverbs where it says, if you believe slander or you participate in that, partake in that, you are also considered a fool, right? Here's what God told me, which made me very like, very, very, I understand differently. Okay, you guys are going to understand differently as well. God said... <laughs> Let them embarrass themselves in peace. (laughs) Okay? Let them embarrass themselves in peace. And what God means by that is whoever has been accusing you, let's just say, you know, um, you're a child, your, your mom or dad accused you of stealing money. Okay? Accused of stealing money. They blamed you. And they called up other family members. You know, when you, when you have problems with your family, like family is the first one to call up everybody and tell them the drama in, in the in family's business, right? So you're accused of stealing money. You never did it, right? And this family member calls up another family member and says, this person, you know, you know what my child did today? My child stole money. Da, 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 da. And then this family member ends up saying, the one that they called ends up saying, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. See, I knew, I knew it. My discernment, my intuition, my discernment told me, my gut feeling told me that they stole money at my house too because the last time they came over, you know, money was stolen too. So imagine now these two family members, they both have something in common. They both lost money, right? But they're both accusing you of doing it because one person said that, you know, you did it and they're accusing you of it and they went and told the other party that went through the same thing that other party is now saying that their gut told them that or their intuition told them that or their discernment told them that so now they're both agreeing on that right you know in your mind that you didn't do it you know in your heart you didn't do it but these two families are teaming up against you calling you a bad child and you know slandering your name now you go to a family event a family party the whole family is there something's stolen And all of a sudden, because one family member decided to call the other one and 
quote unquote, they thought they were confirming this other part, family members, you know, intuition or gut. Now, all of a sudden, because they have told other family members at this party that's going on, everyone looks at you now as like a thief, right? Even though you never did anything, right? So now everybody's accusing you of being a thief. And at this family gathering now, someone loses something. But they think it's stolen because in their mind, they it's been planted in their mind that you're a thief. And because you're at that gathering now, automatically, if something goes missing or something goes gets stolen or, or something's misplaced, you're automatically going to be looked at as the person that stole it. Okay? So now let me give you, you know, let me give you, you know, what God is telling me now. Those who spread lies and slander is a fool, but also those who believe lies and slanders and participates in that is a fool as well, right? God wants you to not defend yourself because here's what God is saying. Let them embarrass themselves in peace. What God means by that is, now imagine now this family gathering. Everyone went home. You're being accused. You're embarrassed, you know, and the person that lost, let's say the person at the family gathering lost a watch. They get a call from, from, from the family member's home. Oh, I found this watch. Does it belong to you? Automatically, that family member says, yes, that's my watch. Automatically, they know deep down that their intuition or discernment was extremely off. And what made them think it could have been you was because the other family member said that it was you. Or that you've done that. So because you're you've been imprinted in everybody's mind as a thief, everyone's gonna everyone's discernment's gonna automatically think this when something happens, right? Because it's been planted. It's a seed that has been planted in their mind. So now this family member found the watch, and this family member that found the watch now feels wow. I feel guilty because I accuse that person of taking it because I really thought that they did. Why did they think that it could have been you? Because of what? other family members said the other two family members that accused you said right now the family member that you live with that accused you of taking money finds the money somewhere in a pocket in their purse and forgets that they may have put that money in that specific pocket because they wanted to not spend it and they forgot and they find it and they're embarrassed let them be embarrassed in peace. Now they're embarrassed in peace, which means they're embarrassed. No one's around them. They know in their heart and in their mind that they found the money. The only person that's going to know that is God and that person. But the only people that are going to know that you never did it is God, the person that accused you and you. Do you see what I'm saying? So the family member finds that the money in the pocket of the purse doesn't say nothing to you no apology no nothing they just act like nothing happened why because the pride and the ego and they they feel bad but they don't want to admit it because why they done slandered your name already to all these other people which means that because they embarrassed you publicly in order for them to give you a genuine apology it's gonna have to be a public apology so instead of giving you a public apology they would rather pretend like nothing even happened they never found the money but you won't hear them accusing you they might be nicer to you now you know they might be friending you up now but in your mind you're thinking the money's still gone and you never did it not realizing they found it but no apology came in. The family member that found the watch, no call from that family member to apologize to you. The family member that also found the watch did not even call the family member that planted that seed in their head to begin with. Because why? That family member now is embarrassed in peace. Okay? Like the other family member is embarrassed in peace. Now, the other family member, the one that was called on the phone that said that you were at their place and their discernment or gut feeling was that you stole something and that the family member that called them confirmed it for them they end up finding their money too as a matter of fact they spent it and forgot let's just say that <laughs> you know um and then they realize they spent it right because what it clicks to them oh my gosh i spent it now that family member is not going to call the member that called them 
they're gonna pretend like nothing even happened so you have all these people now that accused you so now you have like all these family members who accused you they're all going through embarrassment in peace you see what I'm saying? They don't want to publicly apologize to you or they're not going to apologize in front of each other because they all feel stupid. So the one that's planted the seed feels stupid on top or like a fool. And then the ones that said that that person confirmed their discernment, they all feel like fools as well. Because all it does is prove to them and to you because you have the peace of mind because you know in your heart that what you were accused of you didn't do right so what does that mean that means that you can live in peace regardless regardless if you're accused or not you can sleep good at night you can live in peace because in your mind you know that you would rather be the person that's accused than the individuals who claim they have sharp discernment <laughs> because in your mind you know your discernment is not that sharp it doesn't matter if 50 people believe these people the fact that you know in your heart that that that's not true means that you stand out of that box you are that one out of a hundred people you are that one percent out of a hundred people because that the hundred people or the 99% of people think that it's true based on what someone else said or based on the seed that was planted, right? But you being that 1% know the truth. So I don't know about y'all, but I would rather be that 1% than be the 99 that is fooled, right? That is fooled and that is considered a fool. <laughs> I would rather be that 1% that can sleep good at night and be at peace than the 99% that is now going through embarrassment in peace. Why? Because now they have to they have to be at shame with themselves. They have to be in shame with themselves. Not in front of nobody else. The most shameful thing is being ashamed with yourself. Right? And, and knowing that God is watching you. The most embarrassing thing is, is saying that your discernment's on point and you know what's going on 100%. This is what's going on only to find out you weren't right the whole time. That's embarrassing. Only to find out that you participated in, in judging and slandering. Only to find out that you have pointed fingers at an innocent person. That's embarrassing. So because all these people were, are embarrassed, they would all rather go through embarrassment in peace. God says, don't try to prove yourself to nobody because you are that 1% for a reason. You're not like everybody else, right? You're that 1% for a reason, okay? You're rare, very rare. Acknowledge it. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.